Hey beautiful humans, happy Wednesday. Um, hold on, let me fix this. Actually, that's kind of perfect. Am I centered? Am I centered? Yes, I'm centered. This is amazing. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to tag hashtag Anna Rose Richards in this video because holy fuck, this is the hottest place in the entire house. And it's the best backdrop. Like it's 100% the best backdrop, but it is quite literally the hottest place in the entire fucking house. Hey, Chels. Hey, Keishi. Love you, honey. One more sleep. Yay. Um, but I am sweating over here like it's not even funny I'm sweating so much oh it's all my babes hi girls hello 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 three more sleeps no Wednesday night Thursday night oh my gosh two more sleeps two more sleeps until I get to see you girls this is amazing this is so exciting this is so freaking exciting yes Molly oh my gosh yeah literally the hottest spot in the entire freaking house and it's but it's the best backdrop like that's all I can say it's just like the best backdrop so I don't know what else to do like what is a girl to freaking do except I should have gotten more slat like, drag the aircon out here so I could actually like have something blowing in my face while I was talking but we're just going to um hey Kimmy hi beautiful woman ah oh, can you please send me screenshots of your dress for gala because I um yeah I just get so excited about this stuff it's insane um okay this is important this is so so important I have been jumping on and literally just been feeling called to jump on every single week for daily hashtag daily J obviously, but jump on every single week and literally just practice channeling through whatever message wants to come through and practice speaking, but also delivering some like high value epic as fuck content, obviously. Um, but it was really important to me today. One of my friends asked me the other day, she was like, it was one of my clients actually. She goes to me, if you could only film one video for the rest of your life and it was going to be your flagship video and it was the only thing that people would ever, ever need to know, what would it be? And I was like, shit. Okay. So this was what this video is. It's like, if there's one video you need, if you only ever watch one video, like ever in your entire life, if you only ever watch one episode of hashtag daily J, if you only ever watch like one piece of guidance, one piece of wisdom, one piece of like content from me or anyone else, anything on personal development, anything on self-help, anything on spirituality. I hate using the word self-help because it reminds me of like guys in the, like old guys in the eighties standing in stuffy boardrooms, like telling you to like, just do it. Hashtag. Um, but that was before they had hashtags. Hey Matt. Hey, beautiful man. Um, but this what it, it's what we're talking about. We're talking about personal development. So See what I mean? Like I'm sweating from my eyeballs. I'll probably cry later, but like, this is just like eyeball sweat. Like this is legit. It's coming, it's just everywhere. Just bear with me guys, we've got this. Um, so this is it, this is that one video that's like if you only ever watch one piece of content from me or from anyone else in your entire life, this is it. And I just realized that puts a lot of freaking pressure on this video, but it's gonna be amazing regardless because it's not me showing up today, it is my higher power and it is not you listening to this, it's your soul tuning into this. So we're going to speak today about how to tune in. Hi Chantel, hi Shani. Hi, beautiful woman. Hope your boys are so, so well. Um, we're literally, yeah, we're talking about today how to tune in to the one thing or the one thing that you need to know, like beyond anything else, above, below anything else. The one thing that you need to know that is like the center of your existence, the center of everything else, the source from which absolutely everything else flows. And that's how to connect with your soul. And the importance of this message and the importance of kind of getting this and like not only getting it theoretically, but putting it into action and actually embodying and like living out of this space cannot like I just I can't I can't even like make a big enough deal of it. It really cannot be understated. It's one of those things that's like this is quite literally what helped me go from pain to peace. This is what helped me go from fear to love. This is what helped me change my life from addict to abstinence. This is what helped me go from like self-loathing to self-love, from lying in the fetal position in a ball, in a tiny little ball curled up on my bathroom floor, my kitchen floor, my lounge, like pick a place. I've been there a hundred percent, but like from there to speaking on stage in front of like hundreds of people. And so it's like, this is just, it's the one thing. And I, it's so funny. Two things. One, 
I was thinking the other day, like I got obsessed a little bit of time ago, like a few months ago with finding the path to success. I was like, there's one path, I had it in my head, this is my frame of mind and my mindset. There was one path and if I wasn't on it, every other path led to failure. And if I wasn't on this one path, if I wasn't following it step by step, if I wasn't doing what everyone else that like became quote unquote successful did, I studied every single successful quote unquote successful person that I could get my hands on. I copied their movements, I copied their morning routines, I copied their like their relationships, like I literally tried to copy everything about them and I looked for I looked for similarities in all of the most successful people in the world and don't get me wrong, I found some amazing stuff. But where I tripped up was that I was focusing so much on there being the path to success that I forgot that all I ever need to do and all we ever need to do is find our own, is find our own path and is find our own path and follow it to success because all soul paths lead to success. All soul paths lead to truth. All soul paths lead to quote unquote enlightenment. All soul paths lead to goodness and truth and beauty. And like, if that if that's not a definition of success, I honestly, like honest to God, don't know what is. And they're not gonna look like everyone else's path. They're not gonna look like anyone else's path. There's similarities, sure. There's similarities in all of the paths and the trajectories of the world's most successful people, absolutely. But first of all, let's bring it back to what is your definition of success? What does success look like to you? Is it having a lot of money? Is it having a lot of peace? Is it having a lot of fulfillment? For me, my definition of success is being the presence of God in the life of another. Like that's it, full stop, end of story. If I accomplish that, if I do that once a day, if I do that every day, if I do that every minute of every freaking day of my life, amazing. I will fail and I do fail daily, hourly, by the minutes, like literally every 60 seconds, there's failures in there. But I know that if I'm striving towards that, if I'm living from that, if I'm living with that as my goal, that the only thing that I ever need to do is be the presence of God in the life of another, that the only thing I ever want to do in my life is be the presence of God in the life of another. If that's my guiding point, if that's my North Star, then I know that whatever I do out of that, like that's, that's a purpose worthy of devoting a life to. That's a cause that's just, it's a cause worthy of devoting a life to. And I know that whatever I accomplish in pursuit of that or whatever I do or whatever happens in pursuit of that, I'm going to love and I'm going to enjoy the journey because I know that regardless of whether I'm failing or succeeding, I'm living a life in alignment with where I want to be and I'm living a life in alignment with my soul. So we're going to talk about this idea of a soul and we're going to talk about this concept of soul because... A lot of us don't realize the power that we actually have available to us and the power that we have access to within us. And it's like, I had a chat to a client the other day, one of my beautiful clients, and every client has to have a moment. And if you don't have a moment, then you're working with the wrong coach. But every client has a moment where they they swear to God, their coach has gone fucking crazy. And one of my clients, I think, had this one of these moments the other day. And she just looked at me and we were talking about where she was going to live. Hi, Riley. Hi, beautiful woman. Ah. So good to see you on here, beautiful. Um, But it's like we were talking about where she was going to live and we were talking about where, if she was going to move soon, she wanted to move to a particular city. I'm not going to say it because it'll give her away. Um, But she wanted to move to a particular city. And I just looked at her and and she's like, she was giving me all these reasons why it looked like, it looked like it was implausible. It looked like it wouldn't happen. And I just looked at her and I said, babe, what does your soul say? And she looked at me and she had one of those moments where she's like, my coach has gone fucking crazy. And we all have those moments. And if you don't have those moments, hire a new coach because they've like, their job is to quite literally blow your mind. Like their job is to quite literally blow everything that you thought you knew out of the water, completely like radically alter your perception of what's possible and radically alter your perception of what's real. Because the only reality that exists is the reality that you're creating. And if the reality you're creating, like you've gotten yourself to this point, right? Like you've gotten as far as you're going to go with your current reality and your current thinking, your current frame of mind. A coach's job is to quite literally come in and blow your mind, like quite literally blow your mind to the point where you can see things through new eyes and you can experience a different reality. Hi, Katrina. Ah, Trina, gorgeous woman. It's so good to see you on here, beautiful. Look, you guys, look, the sweat's coming down my face now. How good is this? I am going to be like so pure and I'm just going to have a whole new level of like layer of skin after this. Um, so your coach's job is to literally come in and blow your perspective so far out of the freaking water and shift that it shifts everything. And 
you quite literally see the world through new eyes. You quite literally are open to possibilities that are so expansive and so far out and so far fetched and so far reaching that you never ever had considered them before. And that's how you change your reality. When your frame of mind, when your mindset, when quite literally the neural pathways in your brain are rewired so that you see the world, so you feel the world, so you believe in everything around the world in a different way, that you can't help but act out of that and that's how you create a new reality. So my client was having one of these moments and I said to her, what does your soul say? And she kind of looked at me and she gave me that what the fuck look. And I proceeded to explain to her, I went on to say, there's this thing called the soul, right? And all the soul is, is the kindest, highest, wisest, most loving part of you. Hi, Ella. Hi, beautiful girl. I miss you so much. Hey, honey. Um, hey, Nino. Oh, you guys, this is the best time to be on. I love being live this time of day. But your soul is quite literally the wisest, highest, kindest, most loving part of you. It's the eternal part of you. It's the part that existed before you were born and before you came into this world. And it is the part of you that will, when it's the time comes and when you're ready and when it's ready, it will shed this earthly body and continue to carry on and go back to the oneness of all that is. And we can talk about that completely differently in another video. But your soul is quite literally your companion in this life. And I think a lot of us get it, get it twisted when we think about the soul as being something that's detached, the soul as being something that kind of like sits in the heavenly realm, sits up here in its ethereal throne or its ethereal like high chair. I don't know why I just said high chair, but like high up on a high up on a pedestal, kind of like overseeing everything, but not really being actively involved. And the thing with the soul is, and what I've come to understand through working with teachers and just through my own personal embodied experience of like working with soul and spirit and source is that your soul is invested. Your soul is like, if you're, I don't want to say if you're doing it right, when you're doing it right, your soul is embodied. Your soul is within you, right? And you're living from the place of what would my soul do next? That's the only thing that we ever need to do. It's the only question that we ever need to ask is what would my soul do next? But we need to, it's safe for us to get rid of this idea that the soul exists up here completely detached and completely uninvested in what happens in the earthly realm. Because the reality is that our soul is so invested. Our soul mapped out a path for us. Our soul mapped out a blueprint for us before we were born. Our soul created contracts with other souls to come into our life, to share relationships, to teach us lessons, to reflect back to us all that we are and all that we want to be and give us opportunities to show up as who we really are in the world. And our soul is so invested in making that happen that we can quite literally rely on her for guidance, for support, for encouragement, for um, for words of for, for service, we can quite literally call on him or her. The soul is completely eternal. It doesn't gender is just whatever, not even a thing. Binary is not even a thing. Um, but we can quite literally rely on her for whatever we need. And your soul has the beautiful gift of perspective. Your soul has a seat, and your soul has a vantage point from where from which she can quite literally see everything that's going on. Yes, honey, your soul is a voice from God, 100%. The only way that I distinguish it is like the soul is like absolutely, um, it's like God's messenger, if that makes sense. Your soul is the unique essence. Your soul is the unique part of you that God is. Like God is all that is and God is the Alpha and the Omega and your soul is the unique part of God that is unique to you. That is your unique expression, your unique voice in the world. And that's the only way. It's like the, the messenger from God, the way that we can communicate to God through our soul. And sometimes it's just easier because like different vibrational planes, it's so much easier to connect. Hi Lauren, hi beautiful girl. So good to see you. <laughs> um, sometimes it's easier to connect with our soul than it is to jump straight to God because of the different vibrational planes that each of us exists on. So sometimes I find that it's easier to communicate with soul rather than going straight to the source. But that's not to say that we can't go straight to the source. We don't need a middleman. It's just like your soul is like interprets your your soul interprets the unique message that God has for you as it pertains to you and your life experience and your unique personality, if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to link some stuff below on like resources because we can get caught up in the semantics of it. But bottom line, your soul has a seat from which you can see everything. Your soul is like that you that exists from like a bird's eye perspective and can quite literally see all of the pieces of your life. So when I said to this client, 
ask your soul like what does she say about it the only thing i was asking her to do was like what would your higher guidance say about this or the part of you that knows and sees the part of you that sees everything the part of you that knows that we're all interconnected the part of you that knows that life is working out for you and not happening to you the part of you that knows that all things are working together for the collective benefit of the common good what would she say? What would she have you do? Where would she have you go? And it's like, we forget that we have access to this incredible source of knowledge and wisdom and light and truth and beauty and understanding and positivity within us at all times. It's not something that's out there. It's not something that we have to go out and get. It's something that quite literally exists within us that we have access to, that we can speak to, that we can call upon that we can receive guidance from in any moment at any time. And the only thing, quite literally the only thing that we ever need to do. And one of my absolute favorite analogies, oh, the sweat life is real, you guys. <laughs> this video is probably gonna go viral and it'll be like the one with that chick that's really sweaty <laughs> talking about the soul. Oh, I love it, I love it. Hashtag soul sweat, sweat soul. Oh my God, hey Tom, hey gorgeous man. Oh. So good to, um, so, 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 so good to see you on here, beautiful man. Oh, and it's just messaging me, girls. Okay, hold on, I'll get that later. But one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite teachers, Marianne Williamson, speaks about this idea of our relationship with our soul or the divine or our higher guidance being the most important relationship in our life. And she likens it to the image or the, the visual like symbology of the Christian cross, right? So it's one axis here, which represents the hot, the vertical. I always get this mixed up, never again. I will not get this mixed up again. I always get this right. The horror, the vertical. <laughs> The vertical relationship between ourselves, our physical beings and our soul, right? And the heart and higher guidance, right? So our first priority is this axis here, is this plane here, is this devo like devotion to this relationship here. When that is in order, when that relationship is intact and healthy and functioning and whatever, communication is like flowing between this, everything in this plane, everything on the physical plane, all of our relationships, our bank accounts, our financial health. Hey, Josh. Hey, beautiful man. So good to see you. Um, our financial health, our relationships, our physical health, our, I already said bank accounts, our animals lives. There's a dog sitting there. So I'm just going to say animals lives, but everything else, what else is there on the physical plane? I get so caught up in this. That sometimes I forget what's exist, what exists out here. Our careers, like basic stuff, like our careers, our health, our giving back our service, our contribution, our servitude. Like as soon as this is intact, as soon as when this is functioning, everything here takes care of itself. That doesn't mean we don't have to take action. That doesn't mean we can sit back and meditate all day. We can, if we want to go for it, like carry on with your bad self. But it doesn't mean that we don't take action, but it means that every invitation to act comes out of connection first with this high power, right? So it's like this, Axis relationship between us and our higher beings, us and our higher self, us and our higher power, hi Jade. And this comes next. When that is intact, everything on this plane falls into place. Everything on this plane works out. Everything in this plane becomes so much simpler. And it's not that just because I have a relationship with my soul that everything in my life is perfect. That's not been my experience that's not been my experience at all but what has been what i've noticed and what i know in my heart of hearts and in my the deepest depths of my soul to be true is that when i have a relationship with her and when i'm speaking to her regularly when i'm talking to her on a daily basis when i'm communicating with her because it's a two-way like it's a conversation right is, has anyone read the book conversations with god it's a beautiful 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 illustration of exactly what I'm talking about here and I just everyone go and read it Neil Donald Walsh conversations with God if you haven't already if you have pop in the comments hands up me 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 um but it illustrates this concept really beautifully and from my personal experience what I've noticed is that when my relationship with this is intact and thriving when there's communication two way straight two lines of communication going back and forth my guidance around what to do where I should go, what I should say, what my next steps are, the clarity that I receive, the quality and health of my relationships out here skyrocket. They're out of this world. They're out of this freaking stratosphere. And the second that I lose connection with that, it's almost like everything takes a backward step. So 
the only thing now that I prioritize in my life. And the reason that I called this video Tune Into Station Soul is because for me, when we make that our priority, that's all we ever need to do. It's like, instead of like quit focusing on the path to success and just focus on your path to success, focus on getting on your plane of existence, focus on getting on your soul's blueprint for you, focus on getting on board with the plan that is here for your life rather than anyone else's. And when we're prioritizing our relationship with our soul, when we're putting communication with her first, it's so hard to do anything else, right? It's so hard not to, it's so hard not to hear the guidance. It's so hard not to feel the pull. It's so hard not to be moved by desire into inspired action. And there's absolutely nothing, you guys, there's literally nothing in my life now that I will do that doesn't come from a place of inspired action. Like quite literally, and I've created my life in the sense that like I have the freedom now. I always did, but cho making my choices to be in alignment to reflect that. But everything, like quite literally everything that I do comes from this place of inspired action. I was literally sitting there, <laughs> I was literally standing there washing the dishes this morning, thinking about how grateful I was for the fact that we have running water coming out of the tap, for the fact that I, like, I could feel, I was present in the moment and that I could feel the soapy water running over my hands. I could feel the, the coarseness of the, the dishcloth between, like, between my fingers and rubbing on the plate in front of me. Like, everything comes from this beautiful place of like, I get to do this, or wouldn't it be cool if, or I'm so excited about. And that's what happens. Oh, Trina, yay, thanks, beautiful. But that's what happens when we prioritize, we tune in and we connect to Station Soul is that the guidance that we receive never ever leads us astray. The guidance that we receive tells us or invites us into inspired actions that we can take. And so whenever we're lost, whenever we're confused, whenever we're lacking clarity or wisdom or direction, the only thing that I will ever do now, the only thing that I ever do is tune in, reconnect and get back, like check the health, like check, the, check my pulse, check my spiritual pulse and get back into alignment with my soul and my highest guidance. And there are so many ways to do that, you guys. And this was the second thing that I wanted to talk about in today's video. Whew. Sweating up a storm. We love it. <laughs> but there are so many ways to do this, you guys. There's meditation. There's, um, there's soul journaling. There is conscious communication, like being in Often your soul will communicate to you through other people. And this is something that I didn't learn until a couple of years ago when my girlfriend started actually delivering messages and things that they would say would quite literally stick out as though they were underlined. There's so many ways that your soul will communicate with you. And it really is like the only thing that we ever have to do is let it know that we're open to communication and let it know that we're ready to start and ready and willing, um, that we're willing to start the conversation. So I, yeah, I just say every single day, like, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say? And to whom? That's my prayer every single morning. That's like one of the only prayers that I'll pray every single day. Like I pray constantly, like all the time. But that's like the one only prayer that I say every single day. And that's the prayer where I'm like, okay, I know that if I say that, I'll be sweet. Like I know that if I say that and I keep coming back to that, I'll be sweet. And I say it a million times a day, like in this situation, in this relationship, in this business meeting, in this encounter, what would you have me do? What, would, where would you have me go? What would you have me say? Where I'm not going to say it again. What would you have me say and to whom? And yeah, our soul will communicate to us through other people, through conversations that we have. Um, our soul will communicate to us through the books that we read. I'm not reading this at the moment. It was just here. So it's a beautiful, this is Anna's. But it's a beautiful um, 12 rules for life. It's a beautiful example. God will communicate to us through the books that we read. Our soul will communicate to us. Have you guys ever had that feeling and just like pop an emoji below if you have where you'll literally be reading a page and something will jump out at you and it quite literally feels like that sentence is underlined when you read it in your head. Like it feels like there's so much just like weight and there's so much like resonance and there's so much like, um, what's the word that I'm thinking of? those words kind of like reverberate off the page to the point where it's like, okay, I need to pay special attention to this. But that's communication. That's guidance from your soul. There's so many beautiful ways that you can strengthen that relationship as well. And I would just encourage you guys to just open the lines of communication. I would so encourage you to start the conversation and just know that that's the only thing you ever need to do. That's the only, only, only thing is get on the same page as your soul is to tune in. And it's quite literally like tuning a radio, tune in to station soul. And 
and ask yourself, what would that look like? What would that sound like? What would feel different? What would be different? What would, um, what would change? Like what would change? And know that there's absolutely no need. Do not be afraid. There's no need to be afraid. She would never, ever, he will never, ever, ever ask you to do anything that you're not ready for. He or she, he will never, ever, ever ask you to do anything that you, you don't want to do, anything that you're not prepared for. And when I say don't want to do, I mean anything that is completely against your value system or out of alignment with who you believe yourself to be. There will be invitations to shift and change and get out of your comfort zone and be uncomfortable and that's perfect. Hi Jade, hi beautiful woman. Ah, oh, two more sleeps till I get to see you as well. I'm so excited, all of these beautiful angels. Um, only a couple more sleeps and we're all gonna be hanging out together. It's gonna be freaking epic. But there are so many freaking ways that we can communicate with her and your soul, yeah, that's what I was saying. Your soul will never ever ask you to do something that you're not ready for. Um, your soul will never ever ask you to do something that is outside your, outside your comfort zone, yes, but outside your value zone or your alignment zone, no. And there are always ways to sort of, hi, Siak, hi, beautiful man. Ah, so good to see you. So good to see your name pop up on here. You can enjoy my, oh, sweaty hair. Ugh. Um, there will be ways, and this is how I always like reframe it. Um, and my beautiful, one of my beautiful mentors, Amanda Francis taught me this. Um, there are always ways to reframe it. So if your soul asks you to do something that you don't want to do, you can always say back, turn around and ask, is there another way? Are there alternatives? Is there another way that this can happen with the same outcome? And just listen and lean in and tune into the guidance you receive. But the message that I have for you guys today was just, yeah, connect with her, communicate with her. It's safe. She will never, ever lead you astray. She will never, ever lead you outside your comfort zone. Yes, your alignment zone and value zone. No, she will never, ever ask you to do anything that you're not ready for. She will never, ever ask you to do anything that is not in alignment for your highest good. She will never, ever ask you to cut off relationships or leave people or sever ties or, or be brutal or harsh or rude or mean or anything like that she will never ever ever ask you to do something that's outside your your scope and your or your capacity she will never ever ever ask you to do something that's outside your capacity so know that when you're receiving guidance from her that it is completely well within your realm completely completely like well and truly within your reach and well and truly within your capabilities and your abilities just know that trust that believe that i promise um, but yeah, communicate with her, connect to her. And that's the only message that I wanted to get across today is that's all we need to do. Get on the same page as your soul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful chickens. All right. I love you so much. This was so much fun. Um, just so much freaking fun. I love you guys so, 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 so much. And I'm going to be back to do more of these next week. Cause this is just the best one ever. Hi Ash. Hi beautiful. All right, chickens. I love you so much. I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.